we did not we do not mean the life of the tribes the idea of putting tribal life in single quotation mark is to throw a concept tribal life as material that has to be collected from the field tribal life as a study area and of course aiming to establish a discipline like folk life in the west and i should not become very ambitious if i say that i want to see tribal life of india at par with popular studies going on around the world so that was the idea so aaj i have just casually mentioned you that we will have three sessions first a comment on the topic second one of course your ideas about it and third one it's how do you see or the future of the concept whether we are going to we will be able to establish it or we are going to face difficulties in designing this program we can also become ambitious thinking of writing a textbook on tribology or tribal life when we it get a chance to introduce a program and let me tell you uh, the background also in our mphil in comparative indian literature program we have a section we have a paper on this tribal life and tribal literature so it will be kind of extension to that and trying to establish it as a specific specialized area in popular research so now uh, this is the time and i welcome you all the panelists and this is the time to introduce our panelists the first is my friend a good friend for many years mr tamsering lepcha who is officer on special duty tribal research institute government of sikkim that is his official position and besides he is an insider he is a lepcha himself who knows lepcha culture well he is a collector of lepcha folk material and also a writer in his many he attends many seminars workshops conferences on tribal life and he has delivered at many places and whenever we get chance we have interaction on the idea of the tribal life on tribal law or the tribes of india next panelist is my colleague and friend professor k premanathan who teaches in the department of modern indian languages and literary studies university of delhi he is an insider in the sense he is one among us in the department my colleague but he is a critic he is a very good critic of tamil and english literature he is a comparatist has excelled in comparative literature he is a translator has translated many works from english and other foreign languages to tamil and vice versa and also a creative writer we also want to listen from him his idea of the tribal life next panelist is gorav patnaik an electrical and electronics engineer and a data scientist He is involved in data analysis, following the contemporary data analysis technique, and particularly the data collected from the field. And when we collected samples of nearly one thousand, uh, you know, informants on tribal life from the Lepcha community of Sikkim, Darjeeling, and Kalimpong, he. played a very important role in analyzing data and not only that while doing so he has also visited field visited the field and spent some time there to match the analysis the outcome he was expecting and the outcome he has gotten with the actual situation so he is very well aware of the tribal life and particularly the lepchas and next 
is our student complete till last week she was the student of the department and still she carries the tag of student because she is yet to get a doctorate she has submitted her phd thesis last year she teaches english in kalindi college university of delhi she is an insider in the sense she belongs to komai naga community and she is from a village originally that comes from the, the senapati district of manipur so we have two panelists who we treat as outsiders they have some information about the tribal life of the country and we are two panelists who are insiders they represent two communities but our questions will be same to all and we will see how do they react to our queries so let me start uh, my friend uh, mr tom selling lecture from you you know the theme of the webinar that is tribal life of india insiders and outsider perspectives we just want a quick reaction on the topic that has been thrown to you that has been placed and that has been selected as the theme of our seminar over to tom selling please and all my panelists at the outset i extend my deep gratitude to the session moderator my mentor my friend my guardian professor pc padnaik for allowing me to participate in this national webinar on tribal life of india insider and outsiders perspectives as an analyst with regard to the webinar i uh, it is an excellent idea to understand insider and outsider perspective on tribal life from my personal point of view both insiders outsiders issue is very very important because the insider thinks that there should be a support from the outsiders in preservation promotion and other tribal aspects of life it is uh, just have the complete and authentic but due to the lack of resources and expertise in formation in terms of books and other documents most of the time their works remain incomplete at their level so initiatives of insider and outs outsiders working in close coordination can come out with fruitful results so this would be my Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lecha. Uh, Tom Sering's uh, involvement as the special officer, officer on special duty of Tribal Research Institute of Sikkim, has been expressed in just a couple of sentences, and that's initial reaction we wanted in that. Now over to you, Professor Premanathan, as a writer, as a TT. Though you, you perhaps you have not come in contact directly with any tribal communities, but you have interacted with them because I know you are a voracious reader. You have read well Indian literature, so you can reflect your idea on the topic pertaining to your field of investigation. Over to you, uh, Professor uh, Premanathan. I think you have to unmute, perhaps, please. Yes, Professor Pramanathan, please. It is not audible. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. No. Sir, can you speak without uh, earphones, uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, 
I think don't use your, your phone. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, sir, uh, and my fellow panelists. <clears throat> uh, according to the, the title and the theme of the, the webinar, uh, I have an expectation and also uh, an understanding that the redefining the tribal life in India from a new perspective. Because <clears throat> the new perspective is includes both insiders and outsiders. Uh, because so far in the Indian context, <clears throat> the tribal life or tribal community has been uh, identified as an outsider from the classical point of view. From uh, you know the title Aryan and an Aryan or the Milechas Chandalas and Rakshasas, the, the entire uh, the Indian tradition almost uh, marginalized the identity of tribal. So by taking tribal life as uh, study and uh, knowledge, we, we, we are trying to relocate the, the importance and uh, uh, the, the position of tribal identity in contemporary world. That means it is a relocation and redefining the definition and the position and status of tribal life and as well as a study on tribal uh, tribal life or a tribal domain. Because, uh, you know, uh, in Ramayana and Mahabharata, we know the status of tribes, how they are defined. Almost the, for the entire Indian history, the indigenous, uh, as we accept that, the term tribe is not the proper word, but we are using it as a technical term. So the definition of the indigenous, the Adivasis or other, uh, the, all the, the terms are also uh, derogatory, even the Vanaras, the term very, very much, very term is some, something hierarchized and uh, the equal, unequal distribution of the, the position of the community. So by taking tribal life as a study, as a domain, as a knowledge, we, we can redefine the, the position of tribes and tribal life and as a, uh, a knowledge system. Apart from this, we are diverting and decontextualizing tribes from the classical point of view. So it is a really a inclusive part as well as uh, uh, which, which can uh, uh, which has taken the, the spirit of modern, modern values and uh, principles, doctrine and ideology. That's what it is thank my you. understanding. Yeah, thank you, Professor Pramanathan. This is what exactly I wanted. And uh, it's our attempt to redefine and redefine tribe and also explore studies in the area of tribal life as a concept, tribal life as a discipline, tribal life as a material for the text group. Now over to Gaurav Patnaik, uh, you are from the field of technical knowledge, that is engineering, as well as the modern data science following the modern technology. You have also seen tribal life, at least uh, for a few weeks when you were in the field a couple of times. You have also analyzed the data that has been collected from the field using the techniques suggested by you. Now we want to listen from you that when we propose something like tribal life as an investigation area, how do you react to it? Thank yes. you, Professor Patnaik and the team for organizing such a wonderful webinar and thinking of me as a worthy participant in this panel. I am honored to be in the intelligent company of the distinguished panelists, and I hope to learn a lot from this discussion today. Now, as far as the topic and the title of the webinar goes, uh, I was listening to Professor Patnaik's uh, distinct elaboration of the difference between the term tribal life and the complex uh, tribal life compound word combination and the meaning of that new coinage. 
So as far as my understanding from a scientific point of view goes, I believe that the difference between uh, tribal life as two words and tribal life as a compound one word is primarily defined in the problem solving ability of the second term. When we talk about tribal life, we definitely mean the life of the tribals. It is good for documentation. But when we talk of it as a complex word, we mean the knowledge, the lore that is used to solve problems of survival, problems of growth, problems of community within the tribal lands of this uh, country or otherwise. So from my point of view, as an outsider, I think that this field is extremely important for further study and it has to be elaborated, it has to be studied by us and by the future generations so that we can learn how to solve problems for both insiders as well as outsiders using th this very knowledge that we are calling as tribal life or the tribal lore. And we should definitely focus not only part of this webinar, but as a general area of study for tribal life to be continued and propagated uh, through the youth as well as the current experts in the field. Thank you, Guru Patnaik, uh, uh, for supporting the idea. And uh, I was very much eager to listen from a technical person like you on this particular topic. And that will have multi-dimensional investigation, which we always expect. And where scholars from different disciplines will enter to one area to do investigations. And as a result, we may and with something new. Now, uh, D.A. Esther, our student, and she's also a teacher. But more than that, she's an outsider. So you belong to community, the perfect cultural, you know, element uh, holder. That means you are the carrier of the country. You have examined culture right from your childhood days. You have born in that culture and also invested in it. And more than that, you have worked on the culture. You, your topic is looking at the Pomai culture through folklore. Now, when we suggest another area as tribal life, rejecting your concept of folklore that you have presented in your thesis, how do you react to our idea? Esther, over to you on mute. On mute. Please unmute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Over to you. Yeah, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Please. Yeah. So, um, good evening, everyone, and. Thank you, sir, for having me as you know one of the panelists in today's uh, panel discussion. So, uh, as far as my you know understanding of the theme of the webinar is concerned, tribal life of India, insiders and outsiders' perspective. I think you know this is uh, quite uh, self-explanatory. The whole idea, you know, the objective of the theme is to, as you have you know expounded in the concept. Uh, 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 note that it, it's to explore and understand the concept of tribal life of India from both Imic and ethnic perspective. But I think what is really, you know, uh, uh, difficult to explain uh, and, and define here is the phrase tribal life. I mean, so we are looking at it as a as a, a as a concept, right? And that is also a slippery concept. So what exactly is tribal life? So I think this can take a nuanced meaning, you know, depending on uh, the perspective. Again, you know, this has got to do with the way how, you know, we 
you know, we imagine the tribal world and and the way how the word tribe and you know, tribal tends to come with a nuance, you know, connotation. So, you know, as an insider, as a scholar, as as an outsider, you know, how do we understand a concept that is quite, you know, ambivalent, a subject matter, you know, that is often being, you know, exoticized, idealized, or stereotyped. So, you know, we are looking at, you know, tribal life from multi-dimensional perspective you know, a subject matter, as a literary engagement, as, as cultural discourse. So I believe that, you know, the theme uh, generates, you know, a discussion uh, and it has, you know, a scope for, you know, dialogical uh, discourse and, you know, provide multiple understanding of it. Okay, thank you, Esther. And uh, after listening to all the four panelists, uh, I have the feeling that we are in the right track and there is a need to listen more because they have very precisely, very briefly told their ideas and quick reactions to our theme of the webinar. Now we want to listen from them, all of you, one after another, that what exactly you wanted us to do, what, where the problem is involved, which are the challenges that we are going to face while working on this, and any new idea that comes to your mind. So again, I will go back to uh, my friend uh, Tom Sharing lecture to have the reaction. Tom Sharing Ji, over to you, please. Uh, well, with the permission of the session moderator, I'll be elaborating the topic with reference to Hitcha tribal community because I myself born and brought up in a tribal, a little tribal family, and uh, as a what you call insider. I think, to my understanding, the early inputs on Hitcha culture as a whole were given by few foreign scholars outsiders from uh, the perspective of the Goro point of view. He was only just giving the basic understanding of who are Lipchas and their basic ways of life, their land language, their lifestyle, ritual, education, life, birth ritual, death rituals, occupation, demography, etc. Some point of time, we feel as an insider a little bit insecure emotionally, where some information are found distorted, which is incomplete. Maybe that's because of uh, the interpretation problem. Of course, as an outsider, I think it is very difficult to understand the native language. Um, you need a very perfect and professional language interpreter. The situation of Zongu, the situation of Devcha, where people were hardly the first generation learners. We cannot expect the perfect language interpreter because whenever any scholar is searching, your outcome, your product depends on the ultimate actual the interpreter who actually interprets the information like who plays in between. I think where I, we can always as a insider, we always like curious about at least our information should be perfect and it should be correct. Somewhere like uh, whenever we go through the outsider's work, some distortions uh, of course, like it is still in the question mark, but at the same time, we cannot ignore the contribution of the outsiders also because of that limited information, whatever they have recorded. That also today it is an important source of what you call information. At the same time, from the insider's point of view, see, for instance, the work of ER Honing. In his work, let my vanishing tribe, finding understanding about uh, lectures is more elaborative, more informative 
and he is of the opinion that devjas are vanishing somewhere like uh, you will get a satisfaction of uh, while reading the works by the uh, contributions by the what you call native or the insiders so that makes a difference at the same time when the insiders you have the information you have the authentic what you call uh, sources however you don't have the resources to package it you don't have the expertise that's where like we always look forward for support from the outsiders and that is where i can see like this topic i think we should go uh, the outsiders and the insiders i think there should be a close synchronization uh, and a close coordination if we can go ahead i think we can come out with a very fruitful what you call result the insiders are more concerned about what they expect actually at the ground zero in terms of education language literature culture more entrepreneurship economic empowerment promotion preservation and autonomy on their land and so on however the the felt need of the insiders are not touched by the outsiders something we need to as insider we need to rely on the what outsider expect and ultimately the expectation of the insiders has been ignored as a lecture community the lecture community has been recognized as scheduled tribe by constitution sikkim scheduled tribe order 1978 however as lecture insider as a concept that their homeland be declared as lecture indigenous habitat or primitive world so that their unique identity could be maintained and preserved for sustainable development somewhere the the present context is something different the world may think of this word primitive and indigenous may be sort of like self insulting but as an insider they thought it is for them it is a great respect and for insider it is a great that brings you the unique identity of your belongings that's what the expectation of the insiders maybe the policy planner in delhi think of something but sometimes uh, the policy should if it is of bottom up approach if it is welcomed by the the insider i think projects and such development such initiative can be welcoming one sometimes like uh, the policy planner from outside think in the global perspective which may not match up with the uh, the insider there are many in the past i think there are many folk narratives which has been documented in the form of books by the outsiders a good number of folk narratives and literature has been documented in the form of book however today if i go through the pages of those folk narratives on literature documented by the foreign sorry the outsiders i can see lots of variations which again like out of emotion and sentiment when your information is distorted you feel sometimes like uh, disappointed or sometimes you feel a sense of what you call the the sense of what you call uh, you feel something like something has gone went wrong that's where i think the coordination between the insider and outsider should be so i think that matters what you are doing and what you are looking forward so again as a sikkim is as a son of this well when i go through the semantic names of the places names of uh, the rivers in the geographical bonds of sikkim again when the in the documentation i can see many uh, like variation corruptions of the actual meaning 
that's where again I'll touch I'm touch with the emotion. So that's to share what I can sharing. Uh, thank you, uh, Tamji. Uh, you have rightly pointed out to this was my feeling as well. We have a habit of copying certain things. And at one point, the social anthropologist recorded something as per their convenience, and they are the colonial anthropologists. They recorded something as per their convenience. When they did not find equivalent word in English, they started coining words. And unfortunately, in India, anthropologists also started using those words. I have discussed with my students, and that will be a repetition, but I don't mind for that. When we say rice beer, it is somehow not accepted to me. There is something called rice beer. Another example today, I was even asking Fatima Lepcha that the bride price. So there is something that is not equivalent to the tribe and your objection to that is very well taken. But unfortunately, when we write, even our lecture friends, they are also putting rice beer, thinking that if we write chi, we have to give explanation better to avoid that. So such things have to change that the idea of thinking of a separate chapter or a separate discipline in that, to get rid of this anthropological notion of you know, certain things and to create something new and go nearer or closer to the nature and the people. So uh, thank you, we have given your input very nicely. And uh, now I am moving to Professor Pramanathan to get the yeah. outsider's view, detailed view on the topic. Professor Pramanathan. Uh, is that, am I audible now? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, <clears throat> uh, while we try to understand the, the tribal life and uh, the tribal domain, uh, first of all, the two terms are emerging into my mind. That one is the empire and the other one is the state. Uh, because in, uh, in, in, in the course of world history, the, the tribal location or tribal position was endangered, sometimes threatened by these two systems, that the empire and uh, the state. Now we don't have, uh, we have uh, come across, come out of the concept of empire, but the state. So the, as far as the term tribe, we can claim that each and every individual of the world has a certain amount of tribal quality. We all, we can say that we all belong to a certain tribe. This, but only thing is the, the major, the grand structure and uh, minor structure. There is the, the, these two terms are used in, uh, in literature as well as in cultural studies that the grand culture and uh, the minor culture. The issue is if uh, while we take the state as the center, the outsiders, the, the state is the plays the role of an outsider. While we identify ourselves with the state and nation, we treat the, a certain community, the people as the tribes, and sometimes they, they are treated as the outsider. Uh, today, this morning, after listening I think uh, Leong Sang Tam Sang, the, the, the proud uh, of uh, lecture is a very important issue because if a community or a, a society has land, language, culture, and status and uh, accepted by state and government or a nation state, they can continue with the pride and proud. That means a people with land, because any tribal or any community needs a land. But in India, the uh, I want to categorize, the classify the tribes in different form. One, uh, we can, uh, the Eastern tribal community, we, I, I will call it a kind of a civilization. Actually, it is a civilization, but though it is a minor. But in India, we can the find that 
tribes or uh, the indigenous group with land, language, culture, and a kind of uh, uh, minor politics, the, the specific politics. And the other one, the people, the tribals, or the community who have lost their right over the land. That is the major issue in India. Uh, though that's why we, we have to consider the perspective as a political one. I, I don't want to go into the detail. We are all very much aware that the loss of land and the right over the land of tribe is a very a tragic issue during the colon, colonial period. The colonizers simply uh, exiled them. They removed their the, the people, the land, the people of the land for many things, plantain and uh, the forest deforestation and protect. So we have a long history of uh, the colonial history, which uh, deprived the right of tribes. But tragically, it continued in our, the independent India. That is the most tragic part that uh, people without the tribes, I will call the court, uh, the tribe as quote unquote, the tribal community or people who don't have right over the land or who don't have right to be pride or proud of their existence. That, uh, that is the tragic part. Other one, other tribal uh, groups in India are forced to migrate. That uh, I will call it a kind of tribal migration and tribal exile. They moved from their land to the, the larger cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata. Even Kolkata, we, every cities we can find the group of uh, uh, tribes, tribal groups who are living there just to survive by hiding their identity. They are not pride or proud of their uh, identity, just they are living, but they, are, they keep their own culture and uh, the memory, the land, everything. The, this is migrated. And other one, we know the nomadic tribes who, who, who don't care or who don't center in a particular land and territorial identity. And the, uh, this is what we, we can identify. The problem in, in Indian uh, politics or Indian life is why this, uh, the, the, major, the major part of tribal life or tribal communities are subject to, to this kind of depravity. We can uh, call them as uh, uh, destitute, sometime a kind of uh, uh, yeah, the loss and uh, a perpetual, even in the talk of, uh, I think, uh, Liang Sam Thompson, he mentioned about the, the system, the, the major or grand system or state does not listen from the tribal community or tribal people. So the, they, the tribal community is not an isolated or remote life. Any tribal or all over the, in, in global level, they can communicate to the modernization, mechanization, globalization, but by retaining their identity. It is right of identity. So the, by taking all this issue that uh, uh, from uh, as a scholar or uh, researchers, we have to do a justification by taking any community as a great civilization because it is ancient. A tribal religion is as, as ancient as a classical religion. We, we cannot say that it is a product of 100 years or 200 years. It is also a religion of uh, time immemorial and the culture of 3000 years and land is as old as so if you take the time and if you take any grand religion, the major religion, their religion also, these religions also have the myth of uh, origin, myth of creation and uh, uh, all the, the, the protectors and the destruction. But only difference is the major or grand religion claim the entire world as their land, but tribal community or tribal people, they consider their land as their world. That is the different, I would call simply the, the empire, empire, uh, the religion of empire, religion of states, take the world, entire world as their land, but the tribal community or tribal people, they consider their land as their world. This should be accepted by all. It, it is a change of perspective. It should, it should be registered in uh, the the students, scholars, teachers, and particularly in academic, because it will change the perspective. 
and it will reflect in the planning and the national programs without uh, without any hierarchy as uh, professor patnaik the supremacy the concept of supremacy uh, should be eliminated from the entire national or the international global uh, perspective that's what i i would like to uh, put as uh, an ethical part in tribal study to consider it is the difference is not doesn't uh, the put somebody else an outsider the marginalization on the basis of identity marginalization on the basis of uh, uh, differences being different is not a crime or it is not a disqualification because we are all we, we need a right to differ that's why the the much it's a need of our time to inculcate incorporate the tribal life tribal community and their wishes and the we, we should we we means the in a grand politics and uh, the government state uh, academics uh, research we should first listen them and if uh, for example if you want to introduce a school in a tribal community or tribal location first we have to go and ask them do you need school do you need what type of school what do you want to learn do you want to learn electronics or your native uh way of math or bamboo things this is the real interaction we are we we in the name of civilization in the name of development in the name of uh, the being benevolent huh? the uh, being a, a we state so we are here to do anything but it is it is not the need of some community but because many community in, in uh, northeast particularly the eastern states they are self sufficient i some uh, we know the insiders would simply say that uh, do you need support of states sometime you will get the answer no don't interfere we can live ourselves we will contribute to that is because the health uh, the wealth and uh, resources they have the plenty of resources and uh, livelihood is plenty but in other part in uh, other tribal they need lot of thing because they are removed from their land they are removed uh, the entire lifestyle has been uh, criminalized sometime austerized modernized so the this type of uh, studies and the research uh, are obliged to take this ethical and uh, the real the process of uh, the the political question as well as ethical question while we do it's not to just to get the knowledge of other it's a it's a knowledge to incorporate and get this interaction i would call it a, uh, the the modern program which incorporate the development inclusive development including even the minority even the majority and the grand structure and minor structure that's what uh, that my approach towards the 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 tribal study and the need of the tribal studies okay, thank you professor tumalkan you have touched you know the core of the top idea core of the topic core of the theme and by suggesting many things and particularly the land as the world that is the world view the categorization and focusing on the raja period we can refer as all tribal period when the word tribe was not there and there are many aspects you try to touch and i don't have the feeling now that you have no interaction with the di direct interaction with the tribes so even without that also you have sufficient information and sufficient ideas to throw that you have done now uh, gaurav patnaik we want to listen from you because you have uh, come in contact with them you have analyzed uh, the data collected from the field and also we have been discussing almost every day something or other on tribal life you share certain things what i bring as problems as a challenges and we also discuss how to create the opportunities from the, while meeting the challenges so we we'll want to listen from you thank you professor patnaik uh, and also thanks to you that uh, even if i am an outsider i have definitely come closer to the boundary between the insiders and the outsiders so i have a more clear perspective on the challenges that both insiders and outsiders would see the tribal life in this country facing 
So my deliberation is mainly related to two points. The first point is the portrayal of tribal life in popular culture. And the second point is the evolution and community development and a certain lack of cultural competitiveness. Okay, so first going into my first point, we all know there's a clear unfair depiction of tribal life in popular culture in movies in TV and other video and audio platforms. It is clear that uh, there's a lack of research. There's a lack of uh, sensitivity. There's clearly a lack of accountability in this country when such depictions are portrayed. In Western popular culture, the term is whitewashing, where even the roles which are meant for a certain ethnic group are given to popular actors rather than the actors belonging to that ethnic group. It creates a problem in representation. It creates a problem in believing that a particular tribal group or the member of that tribal group can achieve great things because on screen we are replacing that member with a popular star or a, or a fan or a favorite of the fans. So in this country, we've seen that in popular culture, a lot of particular ethnic qualities are promoted over the other. One of them is primitiveness, which is deliberately portrayed in the movies and the TV shows. And uh, rather than showing a scientifically curious member of the tribal community, they will show you an aggressive one. They will try to replace important cultural leaders with uh, people who are creating problems and nuisance and try to paint a picture which is not at all true on the ground level. But uh, that is the picture that reaches maximum number of people who consume this mass media. So lack of representation that I talked about is another problem. Uh, one famous example that I would like to give is the movie Maricom, where the world famous world champion boxer Maricom was played by a North Indian girl Priyanka Chopra. And uh, rather than going that, giving that role to a girl from the ethnic community, it was given to someone who they thought would lead to ticket sales. Now this is the major problem that I have as an outsider when I try to observe the tribal life in this country, that uh, a lot of, uh, lot of things that tribal communities deserve is uh, handed to other powerful people or uh, other situations where they're not being uh, utilized to study or to propagate tribal life as a field of research. Another problem that I have is the trophy treatment that uh, goes on in the depiction. We often just include tribal people in uh, all these popular culture just to, uh, as Professor Patnaik suggested, just to propagate certain theories or certain ideas that we associate with rather than actually studying the ground reality. Then when people who want to do field research or field study, they want to go and interact with these communities, gain knowledge, gather data, they really don't have any knowledge to fall back upon. Because of the lack of this research or the unfair depiction, a lot of people think that they understand and they know the problems and the challenges faced by the tribal community and the tribal life in this country, but they are definitely mistaken. To continue with Tom Sheringsar's point, that insider's concern is often related to the activities on ground zero. But outsiders do not see it that way. Me as an outsider, whenever I have thought about this topic, my thought always goes towards those visual images that I just talked about. Even if I am definitely come in contact with tribal communities due to my father, and I've definitely spent some time understanding the traditions, the culture, uh, the surroundings in which these tribal communities propagate, even then the bias is so deep rooted because of this depiction in popular media, that even after having gone through all these interactions, somehow, whenever I think about this, these communities, there is a biased thinking uh, depending on these uh, depictions in popular culture. So that is a, definitely a problem and an area of concern. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, as this study or this field of area, this field grows, knowledge in this field grows, 
will be rather able to build bridges on the gaps that we have, the knowledge gaps that we have for uh, depiction, for interaction, for uh, definitely for accountability, and most imp importantly for representation from these groups and from Tribal Life of India, so that more and more people can know the real truth rather than the portrayed truth. My second Gaurav, point was... Yeah, please continue. My second point was uh, about the evolution and uh, somehow the lack of cultural competitiveness that these kind of depictions have promoted. Now, in the book Sapiens, uh, the author Yuval Noah Harari has very vehemently pointed out that it is the very diversity in culture which helps in its propagation, the independent identity markers and the distinct culture and distinct knowledge that different tribal groups bring to the very concept of tribal life have helped them grow, helped them survive and avoid extinction on a large scale. Whenever cultural competitiveness was compromised, eventually those tribal groups became extinct because they did not change, let the change appear in their culture, which helped them grow according to the growing dynamic challenges that the world throws in their way every, every uh, decade, let's say. Right? So, I, I feel that the first point, the depiction thing, has created a problem that a lot of tribal life in this country is treated as a single unit, not as a collection of diversified units, but as a single knowledge system where everything is kind of seen under a single lens rather than multiple lenses and then treated in a very singular manner. So many groups, so many different identities, so many problems require as many solutions. But as uh, Premanathan sir pointed out, that the state oftentimes gives one solution to distinct problems, which doesn't end up solving any of the problems, but rather creates a situation where the trust and the belief of the tribal life, tribal community kind of evaporates from the state or from other people who are considered as outsiders. One of the prime example of this is the British occupation. All pre-independent movements, if we observe them, all pre-independent movements which originated in the tribal communities were against the British occupation because even if the tribal communities were located in different surroundings, different environments of the country, they all found a common cause, a common enemy. That is the occupier of their lands, of their ecologies, of their surroundings. And that, that goes on to show that it doesn't matter what differences there are in tribal communities. Oftentimes, tribal life finds a common goal, a goal of survival, a goal of avoiding extinction. And that's why even if they are separated by geographic distances, they often end up fighting for the same cause. Now, with these two points, I would like to just conclude that this area of study is definitely going to help bridge some gaps that we have in knowledge, in understanding, and in propagating the solutions that we think the tribal life of this country deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, you have touched a very important point, the representations in creative writing, movies, this takes us to a different area, perhaps that doesn't exist anywhere. And you have also highlighted the problems involved in looking the tribal life from a distance and through a lens, like knowing a community through a text, knowing about a community, looking at the reports which has been done casually, not based on serious researches. researches. And uh, we'll again come back to you for one line comment on the last comment. But before that, let us listen, dear Esther, unmute Esther, and uh, Ajahn in Sunday, again elaborate the points. And the idea of listening to you again, to have some elaborate view, and perhaps which you have forgotten to highlight, you can talk with examples from your community or adjacent communities, you know, who are very close to your land, that is the Pomai land. 
Yes. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I want to, you know, begin by um, you know, sharing about my personal experience, the conflicting, you know, feeling that I have experienced as an insider, as well as a scholar, you know, during the course of my research. Uh, so what happened is, yes, you know, I am, you know, passed off and I'm speaking, you know, as an insider. But there are times, you know, when I do question the legitimacy of my, you know, the, the insiderness. Like how faithfully, you know, how truthfully I'm representing my insider's perspective. So the irony is, you know, as an, even as an insider, you know, there are things that I don't really, I don't fully understand that, you know, there are certain things that I don't understand about certain practices that my community, you know, practices. This especially, you know, for a community like Pomai, ours is a community where, you know, uh, we are in this transitional phase where, you know, the indigenous value system is again meeting with the modern, you know, the so-called outside perspective. And this is something that is, you know, I, I thought at, at first I thought this is a dilemma, but yeah, you know, but but you know this is something uh, that you know especially with the younger generation you know we are facing like you know we are we're in this culture shock where we feel that you know that like we're not really able to negotiate you know between these two worlds, but you know eventually you know I I came to realize that this ten is rather an ennobling you know or. Uh, advantage for me. So you know, the, the, the reason why I, I say that I'm questioning the legitimacy of my you know, insiderness is because I also do you know, question certain belief, certain practice, because my so-called you know, modern perspective, my, my way of thinking, you know, that has been influenced by you know, literary perspective is in, in conflict with the, with the, with the way, you know, uh, my, my, my community, my folk believe in practice. So for example, you know, we have this, we have this uh, uh, one solemn, you know, taboo system that we still, you know, strictly follow. And this is the taboo of uh, sending off the dead to the burial ground by an, by an outsider. So, you know, till today, you know, if somebody in the village dies and, you know, an outsider come and 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 you know uh, they they attend uh, the funeral service. They have to leave before the burial happen. Again, this applies even to the to the most immediate you know family members of the deceased. So, for example, you know I'm a woman and I'm married off to an outsider, but you know my father die, my father dies and I come and attend his funeral. I have to leave. I cannot. I have I have to leave before his burial, so I cannot see him off. You know to his to his burial ground. But similarly, you know, again, we have this uh, 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 solemn taboo belief pertaining to the monolith that we still, you know, strongly uphold. So a monolith or a, or a memorial stone, you know, that has been erected by the community can never be destroyed, can never be, you know, uh, you, you can never get rid of it. So even if you're constructing a house or you're constructing, you know, a, a road and there is this monolith stone, you know, right in, in the middle obstructing everything, you cannot, you cannot uh, really mm -hmm. get rid of it. It has to be there. Right. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, from one perspective, it is just a stone. But the, the insider believe that, you know, it is a taboo to get rid of it. So it has to be there. So even if, you know, even if it has been, you know, uprooted by natural, you know, force. You cannot re-erect it. It's just there, right? So I mean, yeah. So so there are this. I mean, there is this part of me, you know, that questions certain uh, uh, cultural, you know, discourse that is there. But you know, what I realize is, at the end of the day, you know, me questioning, you know, as an individual doesn't really matter. It is actually the community belief, you know, the community uh, acceptance, you know that matters and despite me questioning and you know at the end of the day i'm a conformist myself you know i'm a performer i'm a practitioner you know myself right so i belong to the community and you know all these other perspective all these other identities actually you know subsume into this bigger you know greater community identity so this is the life the value system you know that has shaped me right so uh eventually you know i 
you know, from my personal experience that I have, you know, uh, during the course of my, you know, research, I have experienced, I mean, I have interviewed a lot of my friends, the younger generation. So they would say that, yes, you know, we don't, we may not necessarily believe in certain taboo system, but we are not ready to violate it. You know, we cannot violate it out of respect or of of, out of respect for the convention or, you know, or what, I mean, there's some, you know, unconscious reluctance is there. So although I say, although I say like, I don't really believe in ghosts and all that, but still, you know, like if I have to go to a river where it is haunted, I will still run away. So, I mean, so that sense of, you know, uh, that that is that is still there right so uh <clears throat> what 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 i want to you know uh point out here is that within the insider's discourse a practice or a belief is always embodied it is always you know a part of you so the the falsity or the the so-called the unrealness of a belief is in never question so they may be they may or may not be you know rooted from the actual historical uh, event but you know, as a collective consensus, you know, they become an integral part of people's consciousness. It becomes a collective psyche, collective, you know, uh, experience. So you know, collective. I mean, community discourse. That's there. They are credible, credible in their own sense, credible in 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 their own way, right? So there is nothing such as you know false belief within the community discourse. Something that we see as fault or wrong is still you know psychologically culturally true you know within the 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 you know insiders discourse and and the, again this is not superstitious this is not superstition this is not ignorance this is not credulous belief this unquestioning you know acceptance is what you know matthew Anner would call it the sea of fate you know that actually held them together that actually you know enabled them to find the meaning of life so I, I, you know, I am not saying that you know the 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 community life that I have lived and experienced is perfect. No, it's not perfect. But you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like we are all human, and we're just trying to be human, right? So so we being human, we have in you know, a certain fault and you know certain uh, flows. But what I'm trying to say is that we think the context, you know, the meaning and perception of the world, you know, they have constructed is true, and it is you know different from uh, the way that we you know uh, perceive it. So another point that I want to, you know, quickly mention is, you know, we have this tendency to associate, you know, tribal life and, you know, tribal life as, as primitive, as uncivilized, as, you know, uh, an experience that is very far from scientific, you know, framework. But again, that's a stereotype. Like so I can say as an, as an insider, as a scholar, you know, I can say that ours is a life, ours is a culture that is very cultured in our own sense like a, a civilization of its own, right? So yes, given the, given the lack of scientific language, certain things, certain beliefs take the form of, you know, taboo system, taboo concept. But again, this can be explained from scientific explanation. So for example, uh, you know, we, 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 we say that, you know, it is a taboo to marry somebody from your own clan. We cannot marry one, but again, the scientific explanation is again it has got to do with the with the whole you know genetic uh, uh, you know issue. So similarly, we say it's a taboo to eat this food, but again, again, this has got to do with the the idea how you know certain food can, are, are is not you know fit for human consumption, right? So so uh, you know at the end of the day, uh, you know me as an insider, but again me as a scholar outsider this has given me you know a, an advantage position you know where i can you know think you know speak as an insider because this is something that i have lived with lived through but again you know, the scholar side of me you know this enables me to actually question and this you know sort of you know broaden my understanding of the you know nuances of the whole you know cultural world the tribal world of my you know own, own community thank you Esther. this is what exactly i wanted to listen from you and that is the reason behind choosing you for today's session. That insider being an insider, you also project the role of outsider. You have seen from a distance and you have understood the importance of the cultural elements and that is still prevailing. So the idea of rejecting something, calling it not acceptable to society, it's not possible so long you intend to stay inside the community. And the other example on monoliths, what an outsider will think. Outsider doesn't the story. I remember once you were discussing that monoliths also speak. 
they are not simple the stone structure erected in the middle of the village or in the beginning of village or outside the village they also speak and they have many stories behind that many stories they tell so uh, i think uh, our effort is fruitful but before we wind up the session i want a quick reaction from all the participants on two things one if we, they have left anything they want to tell precisely and second in what do they think the future of this discourse so uh, tamji are you there Tamsaring ji, are you there? Okay, let's let us listen from Professor Pramathan first. If uh, Tamsaring ji joins back, I will also ask. Uh, actually, <clears throat> the the study uh, the tribal life on tribal life and tribal lore will continue with the uh, new understanding and uh, additional the post-colonial and post-modern understandings. But uh, my <laughs> Uh, I want to uh, remind here that uh, the issue in uh, the, the burning issue in Indian life, uh, because the tribal restlessness or tribal alienation happened much in colonial period. And for more than 200 years, there was a huge casualty. It is not only a political conflict, it was a life and death, almost war. Every day there was death, it was recorded. And unfortunately, it continued after in, in our independent India. That is the most tragic part that even now there is a special law and special forces to, to protect tribal land as endangered. Actually, politically, they, uh, the many of the tribal areas are considered as uh, uh, insurgents and then restlessness and a kind of, uh, you know, uh, the, the political the militancy. Why? This is what the, the real issue which we have to eliminate. It is the for more than uh, 75 years. It started very early in 1940s also that the first conflict happened between uh, the nationalist government and nationalist politics along, along with other the, the, the indigenous people, Northeast or any. So the, here still it is continuing by adding the new understanding we, we have to resolve the issue by put the, the to end to this conflict. It's not, it is only negotiation, it's a conversation. It is a, a, a kind of dialogue. And by creating the new discourse, the discourse of uh, the tribal life and tribal legitimacy is a discourse of the new politics. Any discourse is nothing but to legitimize the identity, faith, and the belief system on the basis of the, the uniqueness. So the any study on tribal life and tribal law uh, is expected to serve this issue, to make uh, the, the, the burning issue, the, the, the tragedy inside that, apart from that. Because we have, <clears throat> as noted by, I think, Liang Sang, Tham Sang, that we, again, I, I will take the lead from his, the proud tribes of India and underprivileged tribes of India. This conflict is also very much to be addressed in, uh, in future with the new, uh, the more understanding, more empathy and more sympathy. That's uh, the mind. Uh, uh, it will add more, more uh, what, uh, the legitimacy to uh, the, the research and uh, the studies on tribal life and tribal law. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Professor Pranathan. And uh, Gaurav, your reaction? Unmute. Yes, sorry. As I heard everyone, I would like to conclude that I agree with all the panelists. There are many challenges, and there are many challenges that have been going on for a long time. This uh, new concept of tribal life is a compound field study, area of study. According to me, it will help in many directions. Some of them I have listed. I'll just uh, tell them as quickly as possible. I feel that this study will help promote uh, equality and a sense of belonging, which is very important for growth. It will help us create less turbulent communities, less turbulent hierarchical structures, and more brotherhood. 
One of the most important points is the sustainable development and sustainable management of ecological resources. We have to learn from tribal communities and tribal life how they have managed for millennium to have a very balanced relationship with nature while we, the modern uh, world, has completely ruined the ecology in a very short span of time. We have to uh, propagate this area of study so that we can develop methods in which we can learn their ways in a very sustainable manner while developing well-meaning behavior and well-meaning ways of contact, bridging gaps, and finally, uh, finding a way that we can build trust and share knowledge without any form of hostility. That's uh, thank you, thank you, Bhara. Thank you. Now over to uh, Tom, Tomji for your reactions. You know, comment the last comment. If you have forgotten anything or anything, and very briefly, maybe one or two minutes. Yes, uh, you have to unmute uh, Tomji. Okay, we'll listen, uh, Esther, the last comment from your side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so my concluding remark is that, you know, um, yeah, so in order to, you know, really understand the culture of people, you know, I think uh, involvement, like Sir mentioned in the morning, you know, involvement with, with the people, that is that is prerequisite. You have to really, you know, see them, you know, feel them, live with them. And, you know, as a scholar, as a researcher, in order to represent the community, you know, a community like truthfully, right? So I, one cannot really, you know, uh, uh, you know, when, when we verbalize, when we textualize the community, you know, I mean, a community life, you know, that itself is a representation. And, and you know, of course, there are problems that comes with representation, representation. And one cannot really, you know, textualize the actual, you know, life. We can only, you know, represent them in close proximity. So I think in order to do that, you know, cultural relativism, you know, that that is an approach that one can, you know, uh, can never overlook. And I believe that, you know, as a cultural uh, studies, as, as literary discourse, I think that, you know, the tribal life is, it has, uh, you know, a great scope to as, as, as an area of you know, investigation. And, you know, even as in a comparative in, in terms of culture, uh, comparative cultural studies. So in my you know, personal academic research and investigation on my community, now what I have observed is that, well, for my community, my community is indigenous and unique and specific in its own way. Again, there are certain concepts, certain customs that are dear and comparable with other, you know, cultural, uh, with, what, with other, you know, cultural society and civilization, right? So similarly, you know, for example, a meat, or, or any you know narrative uh, uh, folklore that is there is right? so that are specific to Pumai, but simultaneously you know these are uh, a narrative that has the, the the motive you know the motives replayed with you know universal theme right so uh, you know at the end of the day you know I, I think yeah so at the end of the day uh, this is uh, this is a, a area you know where the scope to be investigated is 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 good. Thank you, Mr. And uh, for the concluding uh, remark from you, Tamji, uh, you have to unmute. Tamsarikji, you have to unmute uh, and then give the concluding remark. And that will be the end of this session. I can understand there is some network problem in Sikkim that perhaps the Sarim G is facing. Uh, the, from my side, I'm extremely happy listening to uh, the experts from different fields. They have contributed immensely to the theme of the seminar, talking under different perspectives, highlighting examples that has come from both insiders and examined by the outsiders. 
so i find a future of this concept if this can be projected as a study area as an investigation area we can go on having more dialogues in future we can have a proper discourse continuously have proper discourse continuously on this topic and contribute and now we find it is not limited to one discipline the approach will be multidisciplinary and aiming for a transdisciplinary outcome and that outcome will be the new area of investigation with this words i want to stop here and i thank all the panelists for giving their valuable times and sharing their ideas with our participants the participants number is less in comparison to the morning and uh, day session perhaps they are tired at the bridge or otherwise for us number doesn't matter because it is recorded it is simultaneously going on in youtube so there are others who are joining in youtube and we will continue our report so with this i and declare the session to comes to an end and waiting to see all of you tomorrow 10 o'clock in the beginning of second day of the webinar that is the third session of the webinar and thank you before that i will be failing in my duty if i don't thank my friend and colleague dr venkat ramaya gampa who has taken all the pain you know we may go out but he has been sitting throughout for five hours continuously and before and after also and conducting it very nicely very systematically very artistically and this is what we wanted to develop and this is the first step in this direction and thank you dr venkat yes. for taking so much of this and this is a rare example that i am getting from my colleagues and i will carry that in my whole life thank you all and thank all the participants thank you sir sir shall i end it sir yes